on me. Lead. Lead. Because this mohawk ain't working out on TV. Hey, welcome to the Chill Spot. I'm Corinne. I'm Lori. Yeah. And I'm Chilly. Yep. I'm chilling on the chill spot. Explain your t-shirt. Well, it's on backwards. I'll start with that. And it's a little oversized. But, hey, it says, see at www.cnas4 quality care. And this is our national nonprofit Mm -hmm. to recruit, provide scholarships for Mm -hmm. new CNAs, new uh, individuals wanting to become CNAs. It's a place where uh, the entire... Uh, long-term care community yes. can come together and give mm-hmm. to support building a stronger workforce among CNAs. And uh, if I had it on the right side, it'd just say, so ask, ask me. me. So I put it on backwards so we could <laughs> see this. C4QC. Yeah. And the board of directors want to take this opportunity to say thank you to everyone that purchased those bags um, that were in the pro shop. All of that money raised from the bags went to um, help support this. So keep watching because we will have some more merchandise coming up for that. Awesome. Yeah. And we have it up on the screen right now. The yep. CNAs for Quality Care, C4QC. Mm-hmm. Again, all donations are tax deductible. It is a 501c3 tax yep. exempt by the IRS. Please give. Mm-hmm. We would love to have all the support and help we can so That's that we right. can recruit train, certify, and place over 100,000 nursing assistants over the next couple of years. So we're gonna we need, need you, mm-hmm. not not you necessarily our CNA members, but we need people. We need you to go shake the trees and everybody you know, <laughs> shake down some wealthy right. people for a contribution. And if you need uh, more information, you can ask me. Yep. Hey, what do you know? Yeah. All right, that's my big promo, and I'll try to stop messing with my hair, but every time I glance up to the screen, it looks uh, bad. So anyway, unfortunately, uh, we started off as goofballs, and today we've got a pretty serious subject. Yeah, but I'm glad we started the show that way. Me because, too. Because it is a tough subject to go over. So we're going to actually finish up the rest of Mental Health Day. Um, it started um, on the 10th started actually yesterday so it's going to go out through the whole month but we're asking you um don't do it just for the month of october do it till eternity yeah people and, don't um, uh, simply yeah. commit suicide in october right. they do um, that all year round when i was looking at some of the stuff um, i like to do the research and stuff to make sure i'm putting the right information out there a few things kind of got to me and that was Suicide can be prevented. Um, I wasn't shocked by that, but what really got to me was 800,000 die each year. So that means one person every 40 seconds takes their own life. And they, you know, they don't need to because it is preventable. In 2016... It was the 18th leading cause of death. That's just, that's unreal. I, 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 when you get data and facts, Mm -hmm. uh, it it makes things a lot more real than just saying suicide Mm -hmm. or just saying someone took their life. Mm -hmm. That's a staggering number. Every 40 seconds, someone takes their life. That's a lot. I, I've had, uh, I lost a family member to suicide back in the late 90s and um, my 19-year-old nephew and I think about him almost every day um, and so much wish that he had not been as conflicted as he was. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the signs of our feeling of sadness, um, loss of interest in the things that brought you joy feeling of hopelessness, guilt over a loss, social isolation. And when I think of social isolation, it makes me go back to our facilities and think about our elders when they're in our facilities 
and they're just sitting in their rooms. So please invite them to come out of their rooms and join in the activity. Or just I spend saw a, little a resident time with just them. a few weeks ago saying she wanted to kill herself. Mm -hmm. She was crying out. It just breaks my heart. Yeah. Breaks my heart. But anyway, um, yes, just lend a helping hand. We never know what people right. are going through. You just, you know, I've read a lot of memes lately about mm -hmm. we don't know what other people are experiencing. Just be nice. Right. Just be kind. And, mm -hmm. and if we... If and it's free. It is free. It's Kindness free. is free. You would think, as hard as it is for somebody to come by, <laughs> some people to come by, that they must be having to pay for it. I but know. I believe you're right. It is free to be kind. It doesn't hurt. You know, it only takes, you know, it only takes a second to smile at someone. You know, I mean, it's, it's something so simple and easy to do that, you know, we... Probably wouldn't even have someone committing suicide every 40 seconds if somebody would have just take the time to either smile at them or ask them how their do how their day was or even open up a door when you're going into a restaurant. Maybe that's what they needed. They needed the connection with another human being or to be able to see that there is good, you know, in the world by just a simple act like that. But I, I'd also like to just take a second, if you don't mind. No, you're um, fine. And I'm certainly not a doctor or a trained uh, mental health professional or anything else. But I've watched parents who have lost children to suicide. And the guilt that they carry for that is overwhelming, unbearable, and is crushing. And what could we have done? Right. Is it my fault? Could I have done something differently? Why did we ground him? Why did we right. punish her? Here's right. the thing. What my understanding is of suicide is a person thinks you would be better off without them because they're so conflicted. It isn't about you per se, anything you've done or anything you've said. I think many suicides are probably spur of the moment. I didn't research it, but I think people that, You're making me cry. <laughs> that, that don't take time to think things through. But right. There are also people that are just in that space to where they feel, um, you know, I've There's talked no with out. enough folks who were potentially suicidal or so I right. thought they thought they expressed mm -hmm. themselves and, and, um, they just feel like the world would be a better place without them. So, right. uh, but parents, please don't, mm -hmm. don't torture yourselves because, um, when a person has gone to a place where we cannot get them back, it's no one's fault. We didn't fail them. Right. Right. So, and when I was, um, doing this research, one, there was a paragraph um, that I read and I went back to it multiple times reading over it. And like Lori just said, it's, it's not the parents fault. The parents should not feel guilty, but myself being a parent and you being a parent, we can teach our children that it's okay to be a failure. You're never going to be, you know, or I shouldn't say never going to be, but it's okay not to be number one all the time. You're going to have disappointments and each disappointment in your life, you come out better and stronger of, of each time. And, and we need to, um, teach our children how to cope with many things that they're going to be experiencing in, in well, life. And not to have the show go on too long, but, um, Raising kids today is very challenging. I don't know that, I mean, it just continues day in and day out. But friend, my best friend told me one time, you're only as happy as your least happy child. Mm -hmm. So you can have four, and if one's un three are delighted and one is unhappy, that's as happy as you can be as your least happy child. I like that. So, you know, it's... Um, we got, uh, I, it's overwhelming what people are dealing with today and when we watch the news and these suicides right. are just uh, unbelievable. 800,000 a year. That's a lot. That is a lot. That is a lot. So just, just be kind. Um, 
you know, be, be a shoulder for someone, um, you know, especially your, your coworkers. If your coworkers are having a bad day, um, you know, let them know that you're there for them. Most coworkers that I've worked with, um, over the past 35 years, they look at their coworkers as their family. Well, yeah. You, you know, your support tight. system. Well, you know, and it's just like, um, you know, I think soldiers in the military mm -hmm. are the same way. They, they become, you know, brothers and they become closer than I've heard, um, men and women talk about how they become closer mm -hmm. to their field mates than they are to their own, their own spouses. Families. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just, um, you know, if they open up to you, um, let them tell their story to you. Um, do not pass judgment. Um, it doesn't matter what they tell you. It's their story. Don't try um, to change their story. Just let them um, open up to you and just be there to listen to them. And make sure you go back and check up on them regularly. Don't send them a text because anybody can send back a good text message. Go by there and personally knock on their door and spend some time um, with them. And do not... Um, approach it as, you know, they're crazy. I can't go talk to them because it is, it is an illness. And, um, I, we asked Gary to post, um, the national suicide prevention hotline number up there. Um, just if you don't want to reach out to someone that, you know, on the fear of being judged, um, at least take the, the time to write down this number and um, just just be there. And, well, they'll be there for you. Also, I'd like to just say, because so many kids are struggling, and, and uh, you know, I, I was a high school dropout. My teachers told me I'd never amount to anything. My own parents told me I'd never amount to anything. Um, you can be a pretty um, crazy kid and do some irresponsible things and not be a good student and... I even did a little shoplifting when I was little grade schooler. I made all the mistakes. I did all the things. I was the, we were poor, so I was the bad influence in town on every other kid. And so if you got kids that are feeling the way that I felt, I felt pretty down and low a lot of the times that I wasn't worthy and I wasn't good enough and I was a bad kid and I couldn't spell well and, um, you know, we all have trouble and challenges, but I'm here to tell you that I'm sure those are di more difficult today than they were when I was a child in the 70s. And, and um, it, uh, but listen, don't give up. Don't give up on yourself. Right. If you got a kid, give them a few minutes of old Lori Porter here telling this story. <laughs> Kids, you're fine. Mm -hmm. You're gonna be okay. We had a staff member's daughter who stole something from us one time and her mother wanted to bring her out here to apologize. I said, please don't. Mm -hmm. I said, I won't answer the door if you bring her out here. <laughs> she said, well, why not? She has to learn a lesson. And I said, trust me, she learned the lesson. Mm -hmm. You don't have to humiliate her and take her down to the core for her to learn a lesson. Mm -hmm. So just remember that. And uh, also remember this, mm -hmm. CNAs matter. That's right. And you matter. We'll see you soon on the next Chill Spot. Until then, keep caring and sharing.